Hey everybody, I think it's about time we did another channel update video. Not that we have a lot to say in this regard, but you know, stuff's always ongoing in my life, so go figure, right? So, I mentioned this in several community posts I've been doing. I sort of made a decision in my mind, yes, the bigger updates I will make a video on, the smaller updates that don't require that much attention, I will make a community post on. Because, yes, as someone who has 500 plus subs, I w did unlock the community post about a year ago, I think they enabled that. So I have been using it here and there, you know, just trying to be more thorough and engaging with the audience, right? So I've been discussing this sort of thing in the community post. I don't know if I made a video on it yet, but it is a big project I've been working on. It is just a side project. It's something I want to do, right? Because I mentioned this before, that I've worked at Blockbuster, right, for six years, 2005 to 2011. And that's when I started getting into movies. It was during the 2000s. I legally became an adult by American standards, right? So I was able to watch a lot more stuff on my own, you know, go to the theaters on my own, that stuff. But in the mid-2010s, I sort of just had a falling out with movies, right? It's from a number of things, although mostly from starting YouTube. Although exactly when I did, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it says my account was created in November of 2016, but that's just when the account was created, right? That's It's not necessarily representative of when I started making videos. And don't forget, when I first started out, I wasn't doing pre-record stuff with the Elgato capture card, right? No, I was doing it through the Twitch apps on my Xbox One and PS4. Because I wasn't sure if this is something I want to really do as a hobby. This way, if at least do it through Twitch. I mean, yeah, I gotta play it live and stuff. But at least I don't have to shell out for expensive equipment to get a feel if I want to do this or not. And eventually, it did get to a point where I'm like, yeah, this is something I want to do. But I don't like playing live because I get tired very easily. So I switch over to the pre-record format. I haven't live streamed since, right? But that being said, I am working on this movie thing because... Back to the movie thing, I started getting into movies again, sort of, in the 2020s, you know. Not so much going to the theater or watching movies, but just looking at people reacting to different things. Yeah, it is sort of like a niche thing. I know there's a lot of discussion about if reaction content is, like, good or not. But I'm starting to... I also look for certain people reacting to certain movies, right? If they're charismatic in how they react, that's good enough for me. They don't have to be truly transformative with their editing techniques or whatnot, so... In regards to what I'm, the movie project is about, well, it's about the first scary movie, and that the literal title, Scary Movie, you know, the spoof series. So, what inspired me to do this was a number of things, because I just like the Scary Movie franchise for the most part, I should say. So, watching our people react to the first one, I get... Not that I'm really, like, throwing shit at anybody in particular, but I've seen a lot of people react to that the first one, and not really get the references involved. Now, me being a movie buff starting in the 2000s, yeah, I get these things pretty well, right? It's sort of like, I would say it's weird to me, but I sometimes know, like, an actor or an actress pretty well, right? Even if they're not very popular, i like, oh yeah, it's that person. But, remember, even if this person does act in a large number of movies that are big and stuff, I always thought it was weird, like, People don't recognize them, like know who they are, what they've done, like what else they've been in. So that was part of the reason. And then going into scary movie reactions, I see a lot of people, even if they are pretty knowledgeable about movies and actors and actresses in general, they get to a point because I always say scary movie parodies a lot of specific things. It's not necessarily just a funny movie in general that mocks like a serious situation. Because obviously uh, David Zucker's Airplane is based off of something else involving... I think it's people getting food poisoning on a plane, a very serious thing. I don't know what the source material is, but they get food poisoning on a plane, and someone who didn't get poisoned had to land the plane, right? I'm not sure if there is a real story or a book or a movie or something, but David Zucker, the director, took that like concept and made fun of it, adding a lot of humor and stuff, right? So, it's a scary movie in particular, power of these actual other media forms, right? Not just making a funny movie in general. But when I see a lot of people react to Scary Movie, there's a ton of references and stuff. Not just direct parodies, but, you know, actors, actresses, events, other things, you know. I see a lot of people, and I don't like um, going off on a tangent here, but I see people react to scenes that I'm familiar with, or whatever, and they say, like, oh, what's that from? Like, who is this person? What is this in reference to? And I just swore I like, had, like, a light bulb moment in my head. Well, Considering I make content, right? Why don't I just try and make a fun, like a video, compiling all these sources, right, into like one actual video that I could do, right? 
So I just want to be pretty droll in this, you know, saying like sounding like a T eight hundred looking for Sarah Connor, right? I want to do is at least put some effort into being funny and making it look professional, right? Because when I do gaming videos, yeah, they're not the most heavily edited things. I tend to only edit things if like just splicing files together and whatnot. Because I don't feel the need to re heavily edit gaming videos, right? Other people can do that, sure. But as far as like what I want to do, it's not, I don't think the need to add like a bunch of overlay images or zoom in on the webcam and stuff. I just never saw the need to do that, right? I just felt them, at least the way I want to represent myself, it comes off as a little distracting, you know? But when it comes to something like movie discussion, yeah, I started doing that a little bit lately. I was very limited in what I was doing, though, right? Because in regards to the 15 disturbing movies discussion, yeah, I showed the trailer and all that. I showed the webcam, but I wasn't really reacting to it because I already saw the trailer. I saw the movies in question, right? After that, I just went over the cast crew, you no, know, then spoke about why the movie was disturbing. I didn't actually use actual footage from the movies aside from the trailer, right? So that was very limited in what I could do. And I was sorry, none of that was scripted. I was just speaking, like, unscripted. So it did drag on for a bit and stuff. So for this scary movie discussion sort of thing, I want to, like, really dive deep, right? Let's do something re that looks really professional. Professional, I should say, as best I can, right? Because my rig is pretty old right here. It's to the side of me. It's about five, six years old, so it's outdated. And honestly, I don't have a lot of sources for editing, you know? Or, like, money to focus on editing software or whatever. But I did the best I could here. Now, I am working very hard on it. But the problem is I'm not very physically well at the moment. I've been sp st saying that a lot lately. Just, I don't know what the cause is. Maybe I'm sick. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. I've been seeing doctors. They don't have a definitive reason at the moment. So, it is what it is. The biggest obstacle right me now for me to do anything at the moment is just being tired, right? I don't know what's going on with that. Yes, I have very bad sleep apnea. I do use a CPAP machine. It's right behind me. You can't see it. But I'm just not sleeping well at all. If anything, I get three to four hours at most a day. Well, every night, say not day, but yeah. And it's always interrupted. I always get interrupted two hours. Maybe go back to sleep half hour later. Get there two hours at best. It's just awful. It really is. If you guys know anything about sleep deprivation, yeah, it fucking sucks. I'm not even going to hold back on that. You feel like a zombie during the day. That's what's really interfering with me doing anything. Also gaming away at stuff, right? So I am doing what I can here. But the biggest obstacle for me doing the scary movie video discussion, whatever you want to call it, is just gathering all the materials I need. Because I'm doing all this on my own. I'm not really. I have to get the sources for these things. I have to crop them. I have to edit them. I have to add some captions. I gotta find custom imagery to use and custom make the custom imagery to something more appropriate. And for the narration section, yeah, I'm not gonna read. With, I'm not using the webcam for this video, so I'm gonna be reading off a script I made on my iPad, right? So that way I can look at it without the webcam, so I don't flood my words, which is something I always do a lot when I'm not being scripted, right? So, I'm, I'm, okay, so, let's see. Overall, without even actually assembling the video yet, the final product for this thing, I spent over 30 hours already. I shit you not, guys. It's a combination of just not having good software, taking the software a long time to work, and just finding the stuff in general and working on it while I'm feeling exhausted, right? I don't want anyone to worry. I'm not, like, pushing myself too hard. Whenever this does come out, it comes out. I am working on it as best I can, just not overexerting myself, right? So it's kind of an interesting sort of thing I'm doing here. Obviously, I've never done this type of thing before, involving heavy editing, using actual media from movies. As a gamer, yeah, I could show hundreds of hours of Skyrim without saying a word, right? And I'd be fine. But with things like movies, television, you're always, like, playing with fire. Because you never know if it's going to be copyright claim, copyright block, copyright strike, the whole nine yards, right? As far as copyright goes with my gaming stuff, I've only had issues with music in games, right? Because that's the only thing I really have to worry about. I could show all the violence I want without incident. And... The only other thing I... Obviously, sexual stuff, yes. I'm limited to sewing sexual stuff as it would with a movie or television, right? So I just tend, if I do come across that in the game, just to cut that out. That's what I did in the past. You know, I could bring up The Last of Us Part 2. I won't go into spoilers there, but there is a sex scene in that. And also a very crudish sex scene in Red Dead Redemption 1, which you walk into 
which I cut that out as well. Other things like nudity, um, the Wolf Among Us, there was a whole thing there. I had to cut that out entirely. I did that very early while making videos, so I wasn't really sure how to edit stuff. And believe it or not, many years after I played the Outlast Whistleblower DLC for the first Outlast, I mean, if you know about that, there is like a frontal nudity thing involving a man. I didn't censor that out because I saw some other people afterwards and they showed it just fine. I mean, it's very crudish. It is a 7 gen game, so it's not very clear, but like focus or anything, but it's clear what you're looking at, right? I got notice saying like, yeah, this is risque material. You can't have this. Like an automated thing saying, I don't know what that was. Maybe someone manually reported it. I don't know why you would do that though, because that video in particular didn't get a lot of attention or maybe the algorithm picked it up. I'm not sure how this shit works, right? I do know some other people who play that section, the Out West Whistleblower, they were fine showing the Johnson, right? So I don't know what that's all about, right? But then again, I look at their reactors. Yeah, sometimes they get away with stuff that our people can't. I don't understand that. Some people have to actually censor out like ass and crap and hell. Other people, they get full blown away with it. No saying, fuck this, fuck that. I don't understand them. I really don't. If you're going to treat our people harshly, you know, have to censor out the violence and the swearing, why are people allowed to keep the violence and swearing in, you know, without being penalized? I don't get it. I really don't. And I also get back to the like, put, like name shame here. Not that I. That is my intention, by the way, but you know what I mean. If you, people watch the R-rated movies as reactions, right, sometimes they get away with the swearing and violence. They can also swear themselves while commentating. Others aren't, so I don't know why people are picked on, like, singled out or whatever. I don't know. But I am getting off track here. You know, go figure. That is what happens when I do an unscripted video like this, which is why I really want to focus on editing this thing, the scary movie, right? So to give you guys a sneak peek of what I'm doing, I'm not going to show actual stuff that I'm doing. I'm just going to show you the files I've assembled. So, yeah. Quite a few files, right? It's not even done yet, by the way. I have to assemble all these things into order, right? So, the basic thing is, right, I do the introduction right here. I do use a webcam here, right? And for what I'm going to do, I'm going to use still images. I'm going to narrate over the still images, right? I'm going to play them as a video, just the background. I'm going to narrate over them, right? Saying, like, yeah, this is what this is. This is what it's leaning towards, right? And then for the actual video files I'm going to be sharing, I'm just going to show them in, like, their full uncensored manner. You know, just as a comparison, like, this is what happens in a scary movie, right? And this is what they were actually parroting, you know? That sort of thing. It has been easy, though, of course, because my skills in editing are very limited, of course. You know, I'm not huge video editor how some of these other people do these things like as full profession i have no fucking idea you know like jack septicai has robin and markiplier has lixian total professional editors right if so the um either of those two people do for mark and sean it's just incredible right probably why they're so good at their craft so as for the still image stuff yeah i'm okay so let me just guide you through this right the things with the little cone there are the symbol for VLC Media Player, right? Which we've been using to look at the files, right? So as far as what's finished, fully finished, as far as my, my narration and stuff, well, I'm going up to 57 right here. All these things are cones, right? See, so these things are good to go. I just have to assemble it in my software, splice them all together, and I'll make it one file, and we're good to go, right? Problem is, we're way past the point of 57, right? Because I think we're up to like 300-something. Sorry, guys. Again, unscripted, right? So we're over 300 by the end. I might have to add some stuff on later for all I know. So I don't know, right? So for the things that aren't cones at the bottom here, like this is it not a cone, this is not a cone, I'm going to use that image, but I have to read a script, right? Write a script up, put it on my iPad, look at the iPad, you know, record it while the image is there, right? The other things that our cones below at past 57. These are things that are just the video footage, right? I'm not going to be speaking over that. I'm just going to show them raw. Now, so yes, I'm going to leave the swearing intact, the violence intact. Anything sexual, of course, I have to censor, which did take me quite a while to like learn that, how to do that exactly. Basically, I just put an overlay image over whatever's being shown. It's not that difficult. I was able to learn that pretty well, but it's a process of learning, right? Getting it all the timing correct, you know? You don't want the image to be a second layer that you show like a full dick or something, you know? All right, so... I'm not just going over the references either, by the way. In the beginning, I'm going over the cast. Because I feel like a lot of people don't pay attention to the cast, no actors, actresses. So I'm just going over the cast, like the main cast here. 
And also, we, with the references, yeah, I'm showing, like, the footage from other things. Like, I know what you did last summer, I'm showing. The Blair Witch Project, blah, blah, blah. I also want to sort of deviate from other things, too. Like, so, like, yeah, this is what that scene is from. But it, you also know in that scene, this happens as well, you know? So it's not just going to be, like, a full droll sort of deadpan sort of thing, like this and this and this. I do want to inject some humor into it, show some other facts as well. And the other thing I'm doing is showing other things, not just references, but like imagery in the background people might not be aware of poking fun at some other things like inconsistencies in the movies like there's an error or there's a goof or something i'm keeping an eye on that so the hard part is assembling all these files right that's the biggest obstacle right i haven't actually assembled the actual video files in order well they're in order as you can see here but i haven't put them through my video editing software yet in preparation to do it is just a lot of hard work, you know, it just is. And for all I know, this video is going to be like 20, 30 minutes long, and I spent over 30 hours just assembling all this crap already. It's nuts, right? By the time I'm done here, probably over 50 hours, maybe even 70 hours of work. It's insane. It is insane, by the way. It really is insane, right? So anyway, once I get, like, all the stuff done with the still images, that shouldn't be take too long, right? I write a script, I read it out while the image is, is in the background, right? As far as the other cone stuff goes, I just had to put some subtitles on there, you know, like, this is what the movie is, this is the year it came out, and the company that made it, right? As far as that goes, all the footage is pretty much done, by the way. I think I'm up to somewhere, where am I? Somewhere in the 200s right here. So, like, we have maybe less than 50 files to go, just to add, like, a little track, credit track. After that, I just gotta assemble my script, read it over the still images, and we should be good to go, right? I am very proud of this, by the way. This is something I, I tore my, like, um, blood, sweat, and tears, right? That's what Churchill said, right? I poured my blood, sweat, and tears in this sort of thing. So I'm really hoping that it works out well. Again, I don't know how copyright is going to work with this sort of thing. I try to make it as transformative as possible, but, you know, these big companies, they don't give a shit, right? They'll claim you no matter what, even if you're, you're the most transformative thing in the world. So I am sort of playing with fire, but... I want to be clear, it's not about making money, right? I can't make money anyway at the moment. And if it gets claimed to oblivion by 50 or over 100 companies, that's not my problem, right? As long as they let me use the footage in my video, which is transformative, you know, qualifies under fair use, I don't give a shit, right? Let them run the as they want. I just want to make this content because it's something I'm passionate about. I am worried about strikes, you know, and blocks or takedowns. That's what I'm worried about. Which, I, of course, they can just do whatever the hell they want, right? They got the big bucks. They can do whatever the fuck they want with my content, right? So I'm hoping everything will work out in a sense. As far as guideline strikes go, I mean, I am censoring out all the nudity, by the way. So I don't think it would be a problem in that regard. I'm not... Like, violence is fine. It's not real violence. It's not, like, archive violence from, like, a news story or anything. So I think it'll be okay as far as guideline strikes go. I'm just worried about the big studios, right? Because I'm covering a lot of media. Even though, yeah, I just sort of crop the footage in a certain way and add the little text prompt, like, this is the name of the movie. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. But again, it's not about making money. Again, I want to be clear about that. I want put a lot of effort into this. I just wanted to make a fun video. Even if it takes me tens of hours to assemble, I just want to show, like, yeah, this is something I'm interested in. I want to put in work to get record, uh, like, do a good, high quality thing, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to overwork myself in this regard, obviously. Like I said, I'm just going to take it day by day. I mean, hopefully I'll be done with it. It'll be up uploaded by the end of September. Because at the time, yeah, today's the 14th of September. So we'll see where that goes. As far as gaming goes, yeah, I don't want to just focus on this video, right? Because if you're not here for that, if you're not even aware that I'm working on this project, yeah, you're not really going to be interested in me, like, taking time away from my pro like, gaming footage, right? Gaming, whatever, gaming Let's Plays. So yes, I am still playing Dying Light 2. That's ongoing. As far as where that's going to go afterwards, I'm not sure yet. Of course, I got the Bloody Ties DLC that was on sale. I was able to purchase that. Once that's done, I'm not sure. The series is going to have to go on hold, right? Of course, yes, the, uh, Techland has announced they're going to keep supporting Dying Light 2. But as far as DLC goes, 
I've, I've said this a lot in the videos I'm doing on Dying Light 2, but from what I've read, there is going to be a big story-based DLC, but it's not coming out this year, 2023. They've already said that we need more time to fine-tune it, make it bigger, blah, blah, blah. So they've already said the earliest it's coming out is 2024, which considering it's September, you're looking at October, November, December, like four months at a minimum, right? It could be February... Five months, it could be March, six months. We don't know yet. We don't know the details yet. They haven't really said anything else otherwise, right? So after what done with the Dying Light 2 DLC, yeah, the series is going to be on hold, right? I mean, I'm also playing Goodbye Volcano High, having a very good time with that. You know, like a more laid-back, story-based thing. You no, know, not focused on shooting guns and all that stuff. It is like a nice change of pace. I do like the narrative-driven stuff, by the way. So that's ongoing. But from what I read, that's, that game actually is pretty short. I've heard estimates like four to six hours, which again is fine. It's all about the, it's more about the journey than the destination, right? If that's how the saying goes, I'm having a good time with that. And yeah, so I should be done with that relatively quickly. I filmed four videos on that, about two hours each. I mean, two hours total, right? So if that estimate is correct, maybe like eight videos total minimum, maybe ten. I'm not sure, right? After that, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. I do want to take requests into consideration, you know. I do want to do what people want me to play, but it's also a balancing act between stuff that they viewers want me to play, right, and stuff I want to play that the viewers don't, I haven't requested, right. I am trying to do what I can here, because a lot of things people are requesting are more older and obscure things, which I'm not objecting to, by the way. I am a retro enthusiast. I grew up in that era, so I'm very familiar with older stuff. No, it's not super flashy with the 4K graphics and the voice acting and the sound and stuff. So I'm, tr I'm trying to do what I can here because it's something that's older, right? It's not exactly the easiest thing to get a copy of. Because it's usually limited to physical release, right? And then you have to have older hardware to play it on and the right cables to be able to record it, you know, all that stuff. So, well, yeah, I'm almost done with the two things I'm working on game-wise, right? And needless to say, I, don't, I only want to work on two games at a time. I want to be clear about that. It's more manageable for me to just have two series going at a time, right? So, C Goodbye Volcano High is going to be done pretty soon, and I imagine Dying Light 2 will be done pretty soon. After that, I'm not sure. Because as of today, um, Sony PlayStation had a state of play sort of thing. They did announce they are releasing the, what do you call it, a separate ways DLC for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Which they've been dead silent about. It's about fucking time, Capcom, seriously. I've been waiting for them to say, are they going to do it or are they not going to do it? I did sort of have a hint that they were going to do it, right, based on the way there's some interactions in the base game when you play as Leon. Like, it was like this cab that was searched through before, but what was taken? Right? I remember seeing that. Like, yeah, that has to be implication regarding the Separate Ways DLC, even though it wasn't announced at that point. Also, they changed up the ending a bit. I'm not going to go into spoilers for that in case you don't want to be spoiled. They did change up the base ending of Resident Evil 4, right? And then some data miners apparently found, yeah, they've updated the achievements for Resident Evil 4 Remake, which a big sign that something else is coming, right? So I am going to play that. Surprisingly enough, even though they've been dead silent on that, it's coming out September 21st, guys, a week from now. Wow, wow, that's a hell of an announcement, right? You've been dead solid for many, many months, but hey, it gets it what? It's coming out in seven days. Get ready. <laughs> so I'm going to play that. I'm not sure how long that will be, because I was really separate ways from the base, or the original Resident Evil 4. Yeah, it was only about maybe three, four hours maximum. So the option is going to change it up a bit, maybe acquire for the different ending. I don't know yet. But I will be playing that. I'm very eager to play that. I've wanted to play that for a long time. I'm glad they finally announced that today. Oh, jeez. I did look at my PlayStation 5, which, by the way, is where I bought my copy. It's still digital, so it's still there. I can't pre-order it, so we'll have to see what happens there. I'm sure maybe it'll become purchasable the day of. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. Whatever price it is, I'll pay it. It's not the big deal here. I want to cover it, so we'll see where that goes. Even if it's not a long thing or enjoyable thing, I am going to cover that, right? So I do I do want to leave some of my schedule free, although considering it is a DLC, I don't think it will take that long, maybe three, four hours, like I said. After that, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Of course, I 
again, it's a balancing act between what I want to do and what viewers want me to do, right? And again, if, some, if viewers want me to do something, it's something I might enjoy or will enjoy. Yeah, I do want to indulge in that. But it goes back to like both these things are older, so it's not exactly easy to acquire these things, right? Some of the things that people have requested that I try to find physical copies of, they cost an arm and a leg on like, the resale market. It's just not very easy to acquire these things. In one case, I did find something at a decent price, but you won't fucking believe this. They sent me the wrong game. Face palm, right? Jeez. It's just unbelievable. It said this game was in stock. I ordered it. It said this is the name of the game, right? But it finally gets delivered to me. Guess what? It's the wrong game. It's a game in that series, but it's the wrong game. Are you fucking serious? I managed to return it. No, I brought it back to us. It was from GameStop.com, right? So I had to go to a physical store, got my money back. But still, it's the, I bought off a of GameStop because it was at a good price. Or I was like half the price it was on Amazon. And then I get it, and they sent me the wrong fucking thing. Mm. Even though, yes, I did work at GameStop twice as a temp for the holiday. I don't really have a good positive opinion about them, to be honest. I mean, I don't know. Like, physical game market is sort of dead. I imagine by the time we get the PS6 or Xbox, whatever the fuck they want to call it, it's not going to be... Physical things are probably going to be around anymore. That's just my guess. Also, we're, we're hearing rumors about the Switch 2, which are more substantiated now than they were years ago. We'll see where that goes. Because, yeah, the Switch is outdated, Nintendo. Come on. We need, a, like, an upgrade or, like, a whole new thing at this point. The Switch is old. We need some more better hardware. Seriously. Which, yes, it is inevitable, in my mind, Nintendo will come out in new hardware, because they're Nintendo, right? They're not leaving the console market, they're not going to become a third-party developer like Sega did. Because Sega like just lost a shit ton of money with their blunders. But Nintendo has billions and billions, right? I think they're worth like hundreds of billions. They're staying in the for the long run, right? So I'm very eager to see what this happens with the Switch 2, or whatever they call it, right? As far as Nintendo goes, yeah, they have announced the Luigi's Mansion 2. Or, like, port of the Luigi's Mansion 3DS game. I really want to check that out. Because I never was able to play Luigi's Mansions 2. Because it was on 3DS, right? I did play the original one back in GameCube. A launch title. It was alright for what it's worth. And no, I never played 3. That came out on the Switch. So, we'll see where that goes. Also, the Super Mario RPG remake. You know, I played the original again for the channel. Not blind. I think it was through, like, the SNES mini classic or something. I don't know where I played it exactly. Now, they did announce the remake. It looks beautiful, by the way. Fully 3D. I'm not sure if I am going to cover it again. You're going to have to add, like, add a lot more stuff to it for me to just play it again for the same reasons I already played before, right? If it is the exact sort of same game, I don't see the need to. But yes, they did announce today the upgrading the combat system, like the build-up meter, that you could watch a super attack, and they announced like a boss rush mode. But I don't know. We'll have to see where it goes. That's... That doesn't come out till November anyway, so we got time to see what they add or not add, right? Two of my biggest complaints with RPG, Super Mario RPG, the coin cap limit and the inventory limit, right? Because you can only have a three-digit number for your coins, so you could carry no more than 999 coins, right? Because that's three, the maximum three digits. Too little of, like, a wallet, right? The second thing is the inventory, which have, like, room for maybe, like, 50 items, but they don't stack, right? So if you own, like, 50 mid-mushrooms, that takes up your entire inventory, right? Maybe if they, like, do it so, like, if you have 50 of them, they'll stack in one slot. Then you have 50 syrups, and they'll restore your magic points, that'll stock up in one slot. I don't know. They are going to have to make some changes with the accessibility. I know that much, because the game came out in SNES. So they didn't really do much back then to, like, accommodate for the limits of the technology, right? So, no, because sort of, these sort of things are pretty much standard nowadays, right? Can you imagine playing something like Skyrim and they only let you carry 999 gold? Fuck no, right? That would never work. But anyway, I think I've talked on long enough here. I know I go off track with these unscripted updates or whatever. It's just the price I pay for doing these things, right? And the fact that I was able to talk through this without needing a drink, that's insane, right? I usually need a drink by my side, which is another thing why I can't really record for long because I just get so thirsty talking but okay so that's pretty much the gist of the update video right tldr am i right i'm working on the scary movie thing hopefully uh, if i pace myself well enough not over exert myself i'll be done with it by the end of september i got 16 more days so that's a definite possibility i'll be done dying my two and goodbye volcano high pretty soon 
then my schedule is free. I'm going to do the Resident Evil 4 DLC. We shouldn't take that long anyway. After that, I, I don't know what I'm going to start. Maybe like one open world thing that's not too bad. It was requested I do Saints Row 1, which I do own, by the way. I did mention that I have like a video of it I recorded ages ago, one part. I never actually beat that game. I only played part of it, just fucked around the world. Same thing with Saints Row 2, even though I, I just fucked around a bit, never actually finished it, right? And then there's, I never played Saints Row 3, I never played Saints Row 4, I never played Gather Out of Hell. And I had no reason to replay the reboot, because I heard that was fuck awful, right? Also, regarding Grand Theft Auto, I'm trying to get that stuff in as well. Because at the moment, I own the original Vice City. No, not the remap, not the definitive edition, right? I own Vice City PS4 port. I own San Andreas PS4 port. I never beat either of those two things. So, I I don't know. I might go back to those at some point. I would like to like see what actually happens in those games, because I'm not entirely sure. I never bother to look up what happens. And considering that the Definitive Edition was torn to shit with its quality, the fact that I own the PS4 ports of the PS2 versions, maybe that gives me an advantage. I don't know, because those games are pretty frustrating. You know, no checkpoints, all that shit, but I don't know, we'll see. It's here, I, as far as what my next open world game is going to be, it's probably going to be either Saints Row or Grand Theft Auto. I'm not sure yet, right? Then I'll figure out something else to accompany that. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, right, guys, thanks for listening. I do like to keep everyone informed with these update videos, even if they're not real scripted. yet. I go off on a tangent, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm having a good time, you know? I'm still feeling pretty tired, you know? I'm having a lot of health issues, but I've had health issues for most of my life, so it's not really anything new. I try to pace myself. I just want I, everyone to know I'm not overexerting myself. I do have a good time making content. In fact, it does help me a lot for my issues, like my emotional issues, which are still going now, and also the physical stuff. So I just try to take it easy, you know? A lot of stuff's happening right now, both in the real life, physical, emotional, and stuff in the real world. I'm just trying to avoid not hearing about watching, engaging with, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to hang in there, alright? Hope you guys all hang in there, too. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, see you soon.